Hi, welcome back. It's a video lecture established at National Center for Biotechnology Information, or NCBI. Uh, NCBI is, is located in Bethesda, Maryland. He is the headquarters. It was created in 1988 as a part of the National Library of Medicine at NIH. What it provides is provides a public database with all kinds of computational tools, which is freely accessible in the internet. If you go to a website, I'm just trying to. If you go to a website, uh, this is this is the view you could see. Uh, on the left side, you could see all the resources. So you can you can decide what you want to uh, uh, research. You want to do some sequence data, some structured data, some <clears throat> literature data. Don't forget PubMed or one of the biggest uh, uh, literature database is in the NCBI. You can you can study sequences. You can align sequences. There's a lot of also like training and tutorials in it. Uh, we're gonna use some of them. Uh, on the right side, you could see some uh, popular shortcuts. For example, you can quickly uh, uh, search the nucleotide database or gene database. OMIM is a very interesting database. I'm gonna come back to this. This is a database to research online Mendelian uh, inheritance in men, which means uh, all kind of diseases, human diseases. And of course, here is the PubMed, which I mentioned before. And the SNP database, which is right now extremely popular, is a single nucleotide nucleot polymorphism database for different health conditions. So you can use this window here, and you can uh, put your search engine, uh, or, uh, the, the word you want to search, you can uh, search the whole database or just part of the database. So again, what you're research is, searching is practically a lot of times you're searching the primary sequence database or you're searching the biomedical literature. Uh, again, PubMed is a free medline. Uh, uh, they're getting 3 million searches per day. Uh, if you want Articles which is freely available, you have to search the PubMed Central, which is gives you the free article. Interest is practically this that uh, uh, very integrated molecular and literature database together, and we're gonna use it quite a bit. Plus, other uh, very popular search engine uh, is searches for homology homology uh, between or among sequences. Was other very popular between us. Uh, uh, protein structure uh, searches. So all those uh, softwares and databases are freely available and you can freely use it. When you look at the database, you have the primary database and the derivative database. The primary database, we as a scientist, uh, we submit different uh, information, like a sequence information, and we control this, uh, the, the information. Again, gene banks is very important. Uh, DBSNP is a SNP database, uh, GEO is, for example, a microarray database. So that's but that's all controlled by the by the users. And from this database, we have we have a called uh, the derivative database, which is controlled by a third party, which is in that case NCBI, and they create reference sequences. They create something called Unigene. We're gonna use it just uh, in the next lecture. You will see how useful it is to find genes. Structured database, concert domain database. Again, this is this is this is derived from the primary database information. So, what is entrance? And the database and interface system. Uh, you will see the entrance because has a lots of very important fields, uh, and I'm going to show you all those fields. Uh, PubMed. OMIM, GeneBank records are all contained in this database. A lot of lot of links which are gonna help you to uh, to navigate yourself in, in this database. So entry statistics they get over 180 million sequences uh, uh, 2014. Uh, out of this one is interesting 7 billion intra and inter database links. So they're really working on those, those NCBI scientists to able we were able to navigate through the databases. So I mentioned to you that uh, you have uh, 
uh, an entrance record. So this is a gene bank record. The G is missing, I'm sorry, here. So usually he is the header, okay? He is the feature table and he is the sequence. So in the header, what can you find? You find the locus, no, locus name, in that case is AY182241. You find that what kind of what kind of sequence data is it? Is it a messenger RNA? It is the size, it's right here, it's linear. The definition, malus domestica, which is apple, uh, one of the uh, synthetase mRNA complete coding sequence. Here's an accession number. Now let's talk about the accession number. Accession number is the number you get when you submit this sequence. Um, accession number never change. Uh, something gonna change called a version number, okay? Uh, so for example, that was version two, it was some changes happened in this in this sequence, but the accession number is remain the same. And something called the GI number, which is an internal NCBI uh, locator number, if you want to find this sequence, you can either put accession number or GI number into, into the uh, little window of, of uh, NCBI uh, main page, and you, you would end up, we call the flat five format, and you can see all this information. So it's showing the organism, uh, it's eukaryotes, uh, it is uh, of, uh, Rosexi uh, family and Malus, uh, uh, I guess, genus. Here's the reference, 1 to 900, the orders. This is this is uh, the publication. Sequence update by submitter, remember this version 2. Um, some sequence variation replaced. So the source is 1 to 900, Malus domestica, mRNA type of, of sequence. Uh, low rome that is where i guess was cultivated taxon number every species has a taxon number that's for the apple a uh, tissue is from the peel the rna was from the peel so this is 1 to 1931 coding sequence from 54 from 1784 okay so obviously before 54 it is an uh, untranslated and after 1784, again, untranslated sequence. This is the five prime untranslated, the three prime untranslated sequence. Uh, and it's a couple more information. Here's the translation from protein sequence. And here's the, uh, the first part of the sequences. If you scroll down, you can see more. So this is a very typical NCBI flat format. As you see, we got some information about you know about the sequence not as much uh, you will see uh, some of the other sequences you will see more all right this this is practically the other one this is a human mismatch repair one so this is a human sequence uh, as you see uh, again very similar format you have the mRNA uh, uh, this is the mRNA this is a two 2500 base sequence. Accession number, as you see, is U07418. Version number, you can see it again. Accession number never change. Stable, reportable, universal. You can always find the record by expression number. Version number can change uh, if they have any kind of updates. Again, this is the GI number, this is NCBI on internal use. Now, this one. As you see, contains the, the gene, contains the coding sequence. Here's the coding sequence. So we call this well annotated, so it has some some uh, some uh, information you could use. This is the sequence right here. All right. So <clears throat> what other what other sequence can I find in entrance? Remember the e EST we just talked about in the previous lecture. You can find a lot of those ESTs, for example, which can help you, especially if your genome which is not sequenced yet. Okay, this is just just some uh, just some uh, numbers. You can see quite a bit of EST sequence can be found in the database. Uh, what else you could have? Uh, so you could have uh, uh, if you have let's say a lot of EST sequence, uh, you could have called a batch uh, submission. Uh, 
the problem with best submission is really just sort of sort of uh, sending that the, the site created those sequences send sends it uh, sends a lot of lot of uh, sequences without really annotation. Sometimes it's not really accurate or poorly characterized. So you have to be a little bit careful about this. So you can have the express sequence that tags. Sometimes it's genome survey sequence. You could have high stroke genomic sequences, uh, sequence text size, STS size from those PCR map uh, sequences. Those are sometimes lots of lots of short sequences, and again, sometimes sometimes it's difficult to use them. But but again, <clears throat> uh, because contains a lot of important information, uh, could be still very useful. So, for example, here is the gene bug bug sequence for ESTs. Okay, as you see, this is from uh, again a cDNA clone from mRNA. Here's the locus number. This is from some kind of rainbow trout sequence. Uh, and again, uh, this is a lot of single pass sequencings, uh, obviously, uh, with, uh, with some maybe high stroke sequencing method. Uh, as you see, very poorly characterized, very very few, few few information. So so you have to be sort of careful with it. But again, it could be still very useful. Now, as I mentioned, the re reference sequence is the NCBI derivative sequence database. That is curated transcript and proteins. They review it. Uh, uh, they they characterize it, especially for model transcript and proteins. Like remember, we talked about a model uh, model organism. Uh, they they can uh, as, uh, they can use assembled genomic regions. Uh, those contexts we talked about before, obviously again for all those all those important species, and also they can organize it by chromosomes. So you can you can search it by chromosome chromosomes. Uh, so again, this could be very important for your sequencing records. Uh, when you look at look at for example. Uh, uh, those those uh, uh, accession numbers look always for uh, little clues. For example, NM is a good one because it's, this is a check curated mRNA sequence. MP, same things for protein or NR. Uh, if you see X, a lot of times it's predicted, so you you might want to uh, you, you you have to be careful with it. Uh, NG, that's a reference genomic sequence, and C. Uh, could be a chromosomal sequence, and T when is uh, they put some contents to, together, and W um, whole genome sequencing uh, record. So so when you look at those accession numbers, you could you could have a little idea, you know what what kind of uh, uh, effort or what kind of checking uh, those sequences got. So again, if you're looking for reference uh, mRNA or protein, look for NM or NPs. Uh, I mentioned before, uh, it's a very important uh, database, the OMIM, which is the Online Mandatory Inheritance in Men. It is, uh, it is uh, working with organizing all the information you could find for certain, certain diseases. I will give you one example. It's a very interesting one. Fanconi uh, syndrome is a, is a human syndrome. It is... It is uh, uh, problem with, with the kidney function. So let's say you, you want to learn more about it. So put put in the OMIM database a uh, Fanconi syndrome. After uh, you know on the left side uh, as you see uh, so here's uh, after search you find one of the first references Fanconi renal tubular syndrome you could you could have if you click on this you could have a lots of uh, information about it with lots of links on the right side you can even have a lot of uh, uh, other links for example it looks like we're gonna go link out and the link out is basically uh, contains some information of the where are we which chromosome we are what locus we are uh, we are in chromosome 15 uh, cytogenetic map shows uh, the Q or long R15 region, and we have some markers. For example, here already we can we can maybe look at. So we have it looks like two markers, and if you click on those markers, 
We're gonna co go something called the map viewer. We're gonna go in the next lecture and show you more about it. In the map viewer, you have uh, you have some uh, uh, chromosomal information. This is the fifth uh, chromosome 15. It shows you where are you, and this is uh, this is already showing you. Uh, where are we in the chromosome? As you see, this is the gene sequence, so it's right here. On this one, you could you could create this map viewer to show you all kind of information. In this case, in testing, they, they created the way that we have STS markers there, so we have an STS marker here. But again, here is here is the genes located right here. We find at least one STS marker there. Okay, and. Uh, if you if you click on it uh, on a locus link, as you see, we could have a little bit more information. Again, chromosome 15, the regions, and uh, for here you see the mRNA. Actually, it is an mRNA reference gene protein, NP. However, it's still hypothetical protein, so we don't know too much about it. So. So if you say okay, but I, I need to know a little bit more. What is what could be the function of this of this uh, of this protein? What you could do it, it is as you see it is linked out something called BL. Okay, so what is what is BL? So let's let's just click on it. And BL is practically is a plus search, a homology search, searching the whole database for all potential all potential uh, proteins. And so you go down the, the list and see, all right, I need to be something which is something to do with the kidney. And one of the protein actually showing up from yeast, this is yeast, is the plasma membrane sodium response protein. Now, you know, obviously kidney, sodium, uh, uh, homeostasis is very important. So you said, okay, let me click on that. And it go, uh, goes to the uh, flat fly for this uh, this information again this is a locus number it is a protein which is like 397 amino acids from yeast you know from a little bit more information here so what you could do you could actually take the sequence from this yeast protein and see if the sequence matching any other sequence uh, uh, in the human human uh, genome and and let's see, is maybe some, maybe we find a homologue and maybe a homologue protein, and maybe this this is the problem with this syndrome. Maybe maybe this uh, something to do with the sodium response gene and protein. And believe it or not, some scientists in 2000 they did try uh, this method, and actually they they found that that that's that is a homologue gene, and actually this is a gene is important in Fanconi syndrome. So as you see, even without doing any kind of experiment, we got tremendous amount of information and we're able to, able to deduct a, a very crucial information for our next experiment. And here is the, here is practically uh, uh, the publication came out from this effort. All right, so of course we have other, other uh, uh, databases. And again, this is, this is a little bit earlier slide, so this is this is this is just showing some of the database. You will see when we go to NCBI now, it's very much more database uh, available. And what you could do, you could search all the database at once, or just to select one database. Okay, so this is as you see from uh, protein sequence to nucleotide sequence from literature search, some some chromosomal uh, genome uh, viewer. Uh, uh, Sequen uh, sequences, um, some uh, variation in in the in the sequence. You can do it in one click. Sorry. So here we we checked apoptosis. Obviously, is very very general term. And as you see, you could have you could have lots of lots of different hits in a different databases. Again, the view is a little bit different in a, in a, in a 2015 version, but the same idea. to show you if you put even a general term like apoptosis, what what you can get. Uh, you can search a database by those accession numbers. So, for example, here this accession number is uh, came off with two, actually three different hits. Um, uh, as you see, a gene bank nucleotide a sequence, a MAF so you can see the, the position of this gene and even some 
some sequence text sites showed up. Kaposi sarcoma, one more. As you see, if you put something like that, of course, OMIM showed up because that's a human, human uh, disease. Uh, looks like we have two books in, in NCBI. Uh, Matthew, uh, can I give a position? Uh, sequence text sites is available and so on and so on. So as you see, you can, you can very simple search. You can do a lot of interesting, you can get a lot of inter interesting information. Again, don't forget that NCBI has quite a bit of book. Uh, available. We're gonna go back to math viewer so you can see where is this, uh, there is the corresponding gene related. You can find the gene in gene bank. You can find more information about Kaposi sarcoma in OMIM and so on and so on. So one, one more time I would like to uh, review the gene bank records. So as you see the locus, uh, locus uh, name right in the top, okay, I didn't mention here is also the modification date on the, on the right. So this is the locus name, sequence length, mole molecular type, gene bank division, modification date, accession number never changed, version number changed, don't forget. Uh, version number and that's that's uh, concluded this lecture. In the next lecture, we're gonna we're gonna explore together how can we navigate ourselves uh, in NCBI. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye.